Hi, I'm Thomas Williams. I'm a composites engineer here at Vectorply. Today we're going to do a quick Infusion demo, and I hope by the end of this video you'll have a firm understanding of Infusion principles, and you'll be able to use this knowledge to set up and infuse your own test panel. We're going to start today by showing some of our materials and fabrics that we'll use, and then we're going to head over to the table and infuse a small test panel. On our fabric side, we're going to use our EQX 2600 quad. Uh, this is a balanced e-glass fabric, uh, and you can see that it does not have any chopped metal on the back side, uh, which would you know, add a little bit of weight, a little bit of thickness, uh, and slow down our resin flow a bit. We're going to infuse that around a piece of PET core. Um, you can see this is actually an infusion cut core. It has both grooves and perforations. Uh, those grooves are actually going to flow our resin when we hit this core, and those perforations are going to let the resin go down to our bottom layer. For our feed and vacuum lines, we're going to use a piece of our pre-made consumable material. Uh, this green is our feed line, the red is our vacuum line. Um, this is just a piece of spiral wrap, and then we wrap some peel ply around it and stitch it together. Um, this is something that some people make in-house, uh, but that does tend to take time and take a little bit of labor. So um, this is a nice little just bit of time savings. Um, it can also help save some resin um, and, and really save you some money down the road as well. We're going to need some sort of peel ply and flow media too. So you can use either like a standard fabric peel ply and um, like a, a mesh flow media here. There are also some all-in-one products. So this has uh, our, our flow media on the top and then we have a nice peel ply on the back side. Um, again, just different options depending on what your needs are for our flow rate and uh, in needs of taking off or post bonding. Our bagging film is just going to be a standard infusion bagging film. We're going to tape that down with some uh, just standard yellow tacky tape. And then we'll need some sort of cup to draw our resin out of. And then finally, uh, it's also nice to have some sort of spray glue. Uh, this can be used to help tack layers in place, uh, especially on vertical surfaces. It um, allows you to get everything set up before you actually infuse. So we're going to infuse directly onto this piece of plate glass. Um, I've gone ahead and I've cleaned and I've released it just with a release agent. Over here on the side, I've actually left it unreleased so that our tacky tape can stick down. And I've gone ahead and put our tacky tape down onto the table. Um, I left the paper on just so that we don't stick anything to it. Now, typically in an infusion, this is going to be gel coated and then skin coated. So we'll have something to tack to. In this case, since we're going directly on the glass, I'm just going to put the first layer down um, as it is. So this is just our, our 2600 quad. Um, I'm going to lay it down like that. And I'm going to come up with our next layer, which is our core. Uh, now with the core, I want to glue this into place just to keep it from moving. Um, again, if, if we're on like a vertical surface, this is uh, doubly important, but as well just helps um, you know, anytime we're moving around the mold and, and adjusting things up. Um, it is important that we use just as little glue as possible. Um, so I'm just going to do a, a light spray here, do a light spray on the fabric. I'm going to give it a few seconds to, to set up and get tacky, um, and then I can put it into place. And you can see I've only done core on a little bit of this laminate. Um, I want to simulate just both like a single skin area and a cord section, um, us coming up and over that core. Um, obviously on a bigger part, you may have core over the whole thing. And then I'm going to come back with our second layer. Uh, again, this is just going to be the top side of our core. Again, a piece of EQX 2600. Um, and I'm going to tack it into place as well. So just a, a light spray of glue on both sides. And then I'm going to tack it into place here. Now it is really important when we are uh, putting our fabric onto core that we make sure that we don't have any sort of gap here or bridging at the edge of our core. So what I want to do is I want to really push this down into place uh, and that'll keep resin from building up into that corner and creating a hot spot. Um, that's something that can print through the backside of your gel coat. Um, it's also something that can cause cracking down the road. So um, again, I'm just putting this in, into place with a little bit of pressure. Um, we don't want to just let our bag do it itself. Um, so get that on. And then finally, I have a third layer of EQX 2600. Um, this is going to be like if you are coming up off of an overlap or something, uh, just anytime we're bringing a little bit of extra material up onto the core. Uh, we want to make sure when we glue this into place that we don't stop it here. We don't want to stop at the edge of the core. We want to make sure that material runs all the way up onto the core. Again, we're going to put it into place uh, with a little bit of pressure just to make sure we've captured that edge good. And now we have our laminate set up. Um, at this point, uh, you know, we don't have any resin in here, so we can always go and check and make sure we have the right number of layers, uh, we have core in the right place. It just allows us a little quality check that you can't do with a hand-laid laminate. 
Next thing we're gonna do is gonna add our peel ply and our flow media. I'm just gonna use the all-in-one process for, or the all-in-one product for simplicity here. Um, again, I'm just gonna kind of tack it into place lightly. Um, it is peel ply, so it's not gonna stick super well, um, but it should just give us a little bit of, a little bit of tack there. Now in this case, I'm gonna run our peel ply and our flow media only up onto the core. Uh, remember this was an infusion cut core, so it has grooves that are gonna carry our resin through the rest of the laminate. Um, in a single skin laminate, we need to go all the way to the end, uh, or, or really just close to the edge. Uh, we always wanna leave a little bit of a resin break here, just to give our material time to wet out before it hits our vacuum line, and it'll prevent too much resin being pulled out of our laminate and into our catch pot. So I just tacked this down into place here. Next, we're gonna add our feed line and our vacuum line. Again, we're just gonna use this pre-made material. Um, I've gone ahead and added a piece of tacky tape to each of the T-fittings. Um, that'll allow our tubing something to stick onto and provide a little bit of seal um, you know, against any sort of vacuum leaks. So this is our feed line. Uh, again, it's green for go. Um, it's a piece of peel ply on the outside, so it'll release nicely. Um, we're just gonna put it right on top of our uh, flow media here. We wanna make sure that we don't have a little bit of gap, otherwise um, our resin won't be able to get to our part. And then for our vacuum line, uh, in this case red for stop, it's got a little bit of a tail. We're gonna put that a little bit onto our part. We're gonna put about half of it off. Um, that just gives us a little bit more of a resin break between our part and our vacuum line. Uh, it just keeps us from pulling resin out or um, filling up our catch pots. This is our bagging film. It's a little bit oversized for the part. That's actually a good thing. Uh, we want a little bit of room to work to be able to pull over any sort of um, curvature we have in the part. And it's pretty easy for us to be able to take that up with pleats at the end. So to start off, I'm just gonna uh, tape down the corners here, um, give us a little bit of, of tack and um, we'll be able to go from there. Get the rest of the bag down, we're gonna do pleating in order to uh, get this bag tight and sealed up. The way I like to pleat is to start by taking the center of the bag and tacking it down with the tape. I'll then take a piece of packing tape and make a little bit of an L. Uh, we're gonna shove this in into the edge of our bagging film and then we're gonna use the rest of this to seal it up. So I have my L. And he's going to tack down just like that. I'm going to leave the tape on, or the paper on uh, while I do this, so that way it doesn't stick to anything. I lay my piece down, and I just run the bag across. So now this is sealed up. And then I can take this paper off here and here. Pull my bag taut. and seal it up. It's important that we go tape on tape. Uh, that gives us the best seal um, and keeps us from having any leaks. So we have a one and a half horsepower pump that we're gonna use for our infusion. Uh, now the size of that pump is actually not as important as its ability to draw down a full vacuum. Um, so we wanna see, you know, minus 30 inches of mercury here. Um, and we also want to be able to run this pump continuously. Uh, so actually when we're infusing, uh, when we're pulling resin through, we're going to be running the vacuum. Um, and it can also be helpful to run that vacuum while your part cures if we need to make sure that we're maintaining full vacuum. Uh, but the point being, uh, we don't want something that's going to burn out after you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes of use. We also have two catch pots set up here. Um, they're going to provide a little bit extra volume uh, just to be able to absorb any sort of leaks that we have or any changes in pressure. Uh, and they're also going to protect our pump from resin. Uh, and then finally, we have a nice little control panel here that allows us to dial in that pressure. Um, we can pull partial vacuum as we're drawing that bag down, and then we can pull full vacuum when we're ready to infuse. So our next step is we need to install our vacuum line. Um, this is just a, uh, a standard plastic tubing. Um, I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and some tacky tape, and I'm gonna put it around the bag, and puncture our bag. So tacky tape just going to go here. Uh, it gives us just a little bit of something to stick to. And 
and then we'll puncture the hole. We want to pull our T-fitting through the bag and then push our tubing. Now we're going to pull vacuum on our part. We pull our bag down. We want to be able to go slow and get our bag into place here. Nice and even. Uh, we want to make sure that our feed line is still on our part uh, and, and everything's lined up nicely. So we want to check for leaks as we pull our bag down. Uh, we can hear them either just through our ears. You can use an ultrasonic leak detector. Um, you can also just feel a leak. In this case, the bag is pretty loose. Um, it's, it's much, much tighter over here. So I know that I have a leak in this, uh, in this tacky tape over here. So we pulled full vacuum here. What we want to do now is a little drop test. What we want to see in that case is uh, ideally no pressure loss over five minutes. On a larger part, you may see up uh, to like an inch of mercury over that five minutes and you'd be okay. But uh, for one of these test panels, you know, when we're working in the lab or something like that, um, ideally we want full pressure uh, and, and no sort of leaks. So you'll look on our laminate, um, you will actually see that we have it nicely set up. Um, we don't have any sort of bridging over our core, so that's, gonna, um, that's been pulled down nicely. We have our feed line on our flow media. Um, we have our vacuum line in place. Again, it's, it's overlapping our part. And, you know, I can see that we have our core in, in the right area. Um, you know, it's, it's a good time that we can go through and check and make sure that all our ducts are in a row. And if we see any problems, um, we haven't put resin to this part yet. We don't have a laminate. So we can go back and fix it. Um, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's a lot easier than trashing a part. So now that we've done our drop test, um, we haven't seen any pressure loss here. We don't have any leaks. We want to go and add our resin line. Um, so it's the same deal as usual. I'm going to use a little bit of tacky tape. Um, I'm going to wrap it around our bag that is pulled tightly. Um, this one's actually a little bit easier. Um, this tacky tape is just going to give us something, again, to seal to. Um, and if we do it when it's tight, we have less risk of the, um, of the bag bunching up. We're going to puncture a hole. And then we're going to take our feed line and just push it on. So we've done our second drop test here and everything looks good. In the meantime, we've gotten our resin together. Uh, as you can see, I am using glasses and gloves uh, just to be safe since we are handling resin. And you will notice that we are using an infusion specific resin. It's nice and thin, um, so it'll flow really well. And we have about a 20 to minute, 20, 30 minute gel time on it. Uh, one of the things you will notice is I just have it in a little pail. Uh, we're gonna put this pail down low. It's gonna be below our table. That way we're drawing resin up into our part. Um, it's very important that we have our resin low. If we actually have it up here, uh, if we have it above our part, we're going to start flooding it and we're going to get too much resin in. Uh, but at this point, we're ready to infuse, so I'm going to turn the pump on. Uh, we want to have that pump running while we're doing this infusion, and then we'll open up our resin valve. So you can see our resin's flowing across the top of our laminate here within that flow media. Um, the sides are going to flow a little bit slower. They will close out. And our flow front is pretty far in front of actually where our glass is wetting out. You can see that's a little bit clearer over here. So now we've hit the end of our flow media and our core should begin to take over. Um, we probably need a little bit more resin to get up here and actually wet out that glass. Uh, and you'll start to see this core streak down with red. And uh, from the underside, we'll see some uh, perforations uh, and some kind of holes of resin fall through. So right there, that's where we're seeing the core carry our resin and the resin's actually uh, 
feeding now from up below that top layer of glass. Uh, we are seeing a few bubbles here. Um, this is actually the outgassing of our resin. Um, since we are pooling vacuum up here, we're kind of getting some volatiles boiling off. Um, I can tell that that's not air because our bag is still nice and tight everywhere. And I'm not actually seeing air travel through any of these corners um, or from a very specific part in the laminate. Um, if we actually had a hole, it would be, it would be more of a, a big continuous bubble. And then finally, our flow front here is off the core now. So we're really gonna slow down through these last few inches. Um, this will give our part kind of time to wet out nicely through the thickness. Um, it also means that we're not gonna hit our feed line or our vacuum line um, with a lot of resin still remaining to fill the part. Um, it, it may take a little bit more time to fill through here, uh, but as long as we don't gel before this fills, we're okay. So as our infusion finishes out, we're actually gonna let this run a little bit longer. Um, because of this resin break, we're, we're not too worried about pulling a lot of resin out of our part um, or into our feed line. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of time to get close to gel before I actually turn our pump off. And then we'll close up our pump. Um, we'll clamp that hose and we'll turn um, our feed line hose off as well or clamp it, whichever one is easier for you. So now our panel is cured off, uh, so we're going to take it off the table and then look at it. So the last thing we'd want to do with this panel is just to clean it up, but I think we got a pretty good part out of it. Um, we're going to show a quick time lapse of this infusion at the very end of this, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help.